I want to start this video by asking you to pray for Cardinal Burke. I'm sure you've heard the news by now about him, and I can't go into details because of the typical reasons involving our totally lovely and completely fair and freedom-respecting hosts. But Cardinal Burke needs your prayers. As of the recording of this video early on Wednesday morning, he isn't exactly doing great, but is still with us, and things are critical for him now, so please pray for him. That having been said, today I wanted to bring to your attention the film Mass of the Ages. I usually do films for my patrons as exclusive content, and I wanted to do this for them since I owe them a film or book review this month, but then America Magazine decided to publish a hit piece against the film, which prompted me to talk about this today. So, today I have for you a look at America Magazine's coverage for the film Mass of the Ages, which I suggest you watch because clearly the powers that be among the Jesuit order do not want you to see the documentary on the Mass of the Saints. Frequently what America Magazine says is what Rome says. So let's dive in. Like I said, I usually cover films and books for the patrons, and I keep meaning to review the film for them, Luthor, which is the famous Polish documentary on Martin Luther. And I was going to do, I've been meaning to do that for them, but since we're approaching Reformation Day, I think I'll save it for October. And this isn't really a film review anyway, though I do a little bit of that here towards the end as well. But clearly America Magazine, which should be named Francis Magazine at this point, clearly doesn't care for the film, and would rather that you didn't see it, which means you should go see it. Check it out for yourself, though. Headline from America Magazine. Review. Mass of the Ages uses classic propaganda tactics to make the case for the Latin Mass. Woo lad, there's a loaded headline if I've ever seen one. This review was written for America Magazine on the 13th of August 2021 by someone calling themselves John Anderson, who is a New York Times and Wall Street Journal critic. His laundry list of articles are a rather predictable collection of modernist nonsense supporting secular norms and values seeping into the church through the arts. I tell you that to let you know where the author is coming from ahead of time. He has some rather lovely things to say about the film and the holy sacrifice of the Mass that goes back at least to the papacy of St. Gregory the Great, and honestly, to well before him into apostolic times itself. Quote, It's not exactly the triumph of the will of the Latin movement, but Mass of the Ages does bear all the hallmarks of classic propaganda, scapegoating, fear-mongering, kitschy theat theatricality, the use of only enough history to make its case and a complete absence of counter-argument. If only the priest would turn his back on members of the congregation, the movie's logic goes, and recite the liturgy in a language they don't understand, the pews would be full and the seminaries overflowing. Self-ending rates would drop, the nuptial bond-breaking would end. No one would be lonely. To its credit, the rather briskly paced argument for the Latin Mass, directed by Cameron O'Hearn, acknowledges the thing that fuels the burning desire among many to see a return to the quote-unquote traditional mass, aesthetics, the incense and the mystery. Among those who weigh in on the cosmetic pros, there are no cons, of the pre-Vatican to, to write is Jimmy Fallon, speaking to Terry Gross on NPR, who remembers being an altar boy, as do several celebrities who appear in the film. None of them, unlike this critic, are old enough to remember serving as an altar boy in Latin. It is pure nostalgia, though Mr. O'Hearn wants to make it something more. End quote. Wow. There's a ton wrong with his assessment. No one who advocates for the traditional Latin Mass advocates for it because it is in Latin, and the reason for our devotion to it is not the mystery associated with it. If it's there, if mystery's part of it, it is a tiny part at best. We have seen the fruits of the so-called liturgical reform. We knew, know where the new Mass came from, and we want nothing to do with it. We've seen the new Mass become a time capsule to the 1960s, it being time-locked into an era when everything in society was being thrown out the window, and we've seen the effect it is having in Protestantizing the Catholic Church. We want the timeless Mass. We want something that isn't trivializing the sacred. And I had a very hard time putting words to what was dr the driving force was for why so many laity either attend exclusively the Latin Mass or would if they were able to. Then I found Archbishop Vigano's statement about the transformative effect it has on priests who discover and learn the Mass, and it equally applies to the laity who discover it as well. So I'll use his words instead. Quote, 
Many priests discover the treasures of the venerable Tridentine liturgy only when they celebrate it and allow themselves to be permeated by it, and it is not uncommon for an initial curiosity towards the quote-unquote extraordinary form, certainly fascinating due to the solemnity of the rite, to change quickly into the awareness of the depth of the words, the clarity of the doctrine, the incomparable spirituality that it gives birth to and nourishes in our souls. There is a perfect harmony that words cannot express, and that the faithful can understand only in part, but which touches the heart of the priesthood as only God can. This can be confirmed by my confreres who have approached the Usus Antiqua after decades of obedient celebration of the Novus Ordo. A world opens up, a cosmos that includes the prayer of the breviary, with the lessons of matins, and the commentaries of the fathers. The cross references to the text of the Mass, the martyrology in the hour of prime, they are sacred words, not because they are expressed in Latin, but rather they are expressed in Latin because the Vulgate language would demean them, would profane them, as Dom Geringer wisely observed. These are the words of the bride to the divine bridegroom, words of the soul that lives in intimate union with God, of the soul that lets itself be inhabited by the Most Holy Trinity. Essentially priestly words in the deepest sense of the term, which implies in the priesthood not only the power to offer sacrifice, but to unite in self-offering to the pure, holy, and immaculate victim. It has nothing to do with the ramblings of the Reformed Rite, which is too intent on pleasing the secularized mentality to turn to the majesty of God and the heavenly court, so preoccupied with making itself understandable that one has to give up on communicating anything but trivial obviousness, so careful not to hurt the feelings of heretics as to allow itself to keep silent about the truth, just at the moment in which the Lord God makes himself present on the altar. So fearful of asking the faithful for the slightest commitment as to trivialize the sacred song and an artistic expression linked to worship." End quote. While that's a lengthy quote, it does an adequate job of getting to the beginning of why we advocate so strongly for it, why some of us will simply never go back to the Bugnini vulgar rite of mass, and why we'll go to the SSPX if need be, since Francis confirmed literally everything Archbishop Lefebvre said about the state of the church. But let's get back to the America Magazine piece, which is a doozy. Mr. Anderson describes the young mother featured in the film and almost dismissively dumps on her for her concerns about getting her children to heaven. But not only that, he closes his article out by pointing out that the description of the second film in the series that's in the works goes into the plans of Archbishop Anibale Bugnini, the architect of the new Mass. The man who is part of the organization whose name I can't say on this platform but that organization I borrowed a substitution name for from some pop culture stuff that lampooned them. I call them the Stonecutters, and he wasn't rumored to be a member. Paul VI banished him from the Vatican to an unfortunate desert diocese because he was something worse than a stonecutter, to paraphrase Paul VI. It's been confirmed elsewhere that he was, but whatever Paul VI was alluding to has never really been examined in depth by anyone to my knowledge, so I won't speculate about that here. But instead ditching this article entirely, I want to focus on something the author says here about how the Mass that was in service to the Church for 1,500 years was not inclusive enough. Give me a break. Quote, A film review is no place to make sweeping conclusions about the validity of one Mass over another, and a film critic is not a theologian. But it is difficult to watch an exercise like Mass of the Ages and not see its arguments as akin to the paranoid secular debates, exclusionary worldview, and antipathy to change that has displayed itself in so many other arenas of public life. And then there's the charity of Pope Francis, the pontiff's attempts to make the Mass both capital C Catholic and little c Catholic, as well as unified, have been met with the same kind of us-against-them thinking, that consoles people whose real problems lay elsewhere and whose double talk is given a showcase in Mass of the Ages. End quote. Yeah, he went there and insulted the filmmakers directly, and he insulted you and I in astonishing ways. And he then basically says, if you resist the changes opposed upon the Church since the Council, and especially under Francis, then basically you're like the secular leaders of Italy, Germany, and elsewhere in about the 1920s through about the 1940s, if you catch my meaning. Again, hat tip to our hosts here. But that, folks, is what we're facing. More of that will be coming, I assure you, as time rolls on, both from the secular world and from men like this who are allegedly in the church, but who advocate for the church to embrace things she and sacred scripture have unequivocally rejected. They are the ones who will truly descend from the church. They have just packaged their rejection of the moral theology of the church under the banner of a pontiff who is himself so much like Bugnini in his work that one can scarcely tell the two apart. 
like I said at the start, I wanted to do a review of Mass of the Ages for my patrons since I owe them a book or a film review this month anyway, and I had planned to do this film for them. But then I ran into this article and realized very quickly that we will see more of this coming much more. The film was never meant to be part of the combat in the church over the liturgy we see now, thanks mostly to Francis's motu proprio functionally ending the access to the Latin Mass through treasures meant to first corral Catholics in a far-flung corners of any diocese, and then limit who can say the Mass, and then preventing future priests from saying it. That's all in Traditionis Custodis. The Latin Mass has a sunset, basically. Films like this take longer to make than most people realize, and it would have been in pre-production before the news of the motu proprio came out late in the spring. That's just a fact, so it's not a propaganda piece against Traditionis Custodis. Its timing is providential, though, as it shows people what it is we want and tells them without reservation about what happened in the church with the liturgy and what treasure of the church was taken from us that is your birthright as a Catholic. It cannot be taken from you, and if anything, the sudden influx of the new Latin Mass goers this past month on Sundays at seemingly every Latin Mass I know of attests to this. And that is why I suspect articles like this are written and have been written. This is not the response they are expecting, and it is why we should expect more hits against the Mass to come from Rome. So in review, which I will keep very short, Mass of the Ages features a young family trying to make its way after a personal loss that deeply affects them. They find solace in the traditional liturgy. They find shelter there. The mother in the film knows that if she raises her children in the preconciliar faith through devotions mostly lost to the sweeping changes that rocked the church after the council, and she takes her children to daily mass in the traditional form, she will have her best shot at keeping her children in the church throughout their lives. If anything, I felt convicted watching her with her children as a parent. Her presence in the film is actually, honestly, it's minimal but it's deeply impactful. The rest of the film is about the Mass itself, declining vocations in the church, declining use of sacraments, all of it, and how parishes that have the Latin Mass thrive. Why Anderson is against thriving traditional parishes and uses extremely inappropriate language to describe traditional Catholics is beyond my comprehension, except that it indicates an imbibing of the values of the world. It's not that surprising, all things considered. In favor of Mass of the Ages, I'll say this. It goes over how the Mass was changed by Paul VI in the very real meaning of the word change. You get to see how few prayers there are in the Novus Ordo by comparison, and the changed relationship between God and man as seen in the new Mass. That alone is why you should watch it, because after seeing it, I would hope you'd understand that this isn't about the language because of the language, but because the new Mass preaches a new religion. I recommend the film without reservation, and on the Sources blog at returntotradition.org, I'll have a link to their website so you can donate if you feel inclined to help them make future episodes. And I do hope to interview them with my friend Trad Patrick over on his channel, if they'll accept our inv invitation to come on with us. Like I said at the very beginning of this video, please keep Cardinal Burke in your prayers. I'm making this video on the morning of August 18th, and as of the time of this production, he needs your prayers, but is still with us. I can't say why in this video for the usual reasons, since our hosts restrict what can be said even in passing about certain subjects. But Cardinal Burke needs your prayers, even if you dislike him. I know many watching dislike him, but please at least say an Ave Maria for him in your charity. With that, let me know what you think about America Magazine's new piece on the Mass of the Ages film in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't, it really does help. And please pray for the Church and for Cardinal Burke. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.